The topic for this video is interrupt cycle. That is, during an instruction cycle, how an interrupt is handled. Firstly, there are two flip flops here. One is the R flip flop, other is the R E N. R is the interrupt flip flop. Now, the value of R determines if the instruction will enter the instruction cycle or the interrupt cycle. If it is zero, the normal instruction cycle is executed. That is, first two phases, fetch and decode instruction are executed. Now, during the execution phase, there is another flip-flop that is IEN. It stands for interrupt enable flip-flop. Its value is checked. If it is zero, that means there is no interrupt and the next instruction is executed. But if the value of IEN is one, it is checked for the input or the output interrupt. If the value of FGI and FGO, that is the input flip-flop and output flip-flop, both are zero. That means no such interrupt need to be handled and next instruction is executed. But if any one of these gets the value 1, R is set to 1. That means an interrupt is there then R is set to 1. That means interrupt cycle needs to be executed here. Now when R is equal to 1, we come to the interrupt cycle. Store return address in location 0. That means after the interrupt, we need to come back to the ongoing instruction. The address of that particular instruction is stored at this location. Branch to location 1. This is the new instruction or the interrupt to be handled. And then when it is handled, both the value of R E N and R is set to 0 because both for R is equal to 0 and IEA is equal to 0, the instruction cycle was executed. So this is how the interrupt cycle is executed and interrupts are handled during the instruction cycle. Thank you.